Let's be honest, business dry spells suck. There's no mincing words here because I've been there and I get it. But as an eternal optimist, a part of me does secretly find these slower times to be telling and even beneficial in some ways. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. One big part of business I don't think you necessarily can expect or can always plan for in the beginning are the dry spells or the slower seasons. There's this natural ebb and flow to business, busy seasons followed by quiet seasons. And unless those slower times are built into your line of work, like when I was a wedding photographer in the Midwest and could only work about six months out of the year, there's just no way of knowing when or why or how long your sales might be down for. It's a totally normal response to get a bit flustered when it happens for the first time too. Like you're watching things grow and grow and then suddenly something shifts, life happens or sales slow down and you're left wondering what happened? Where did you go wrong and what the heck should you do? Even the second, third or 13th slowdown might feel different than the rest and throw you for a loop. All of those imposter syndrome voices that tell you you're not meant for this or you're not good at it or you've clearly lost all momentum come barreling in and you start to wonder if you'll ever see an uptick in business again, if you'll be able to keep this thing running for the long haul. It's wild that your brain can literally discredit something you've spent months or even years on in a matter of seconds, but our human brain plays tricks on us and we tend to question everything the moment things shift. It can actually be quite scary when it happens, especially if the downtick is due to something you can't control, outside circumstances that you have zero power over, like the economy taking a downturn or, I don't know, a worldwide pandemic causing people to change the way they shop, spend, and one that has everyone reevaluating our spending habits. Like I said, there's not always a way to predict what might cause the ebbs and the flows in our sales and profits. And yet I found that using the slower periods of time in my business for intentional growth, for maintenance, optimization, and creative solutions can be one of the most powerful ways to boost things up and at least get my business on the path towards more sales and healthier numbers. But before we get into a few ways to evaluate and glow up your numbers when things slow down unexpectedly, first, I just want you to know that downturns in business are totally and completely normal. They can be scary, absolutely, and they can take you by surprise, especially when you're not seasoned or when you're just starting out. But every single business out there goes through drier seasons of sales, even the giants like Google and Amazon. And to me, it's what you choose to actively do in those seasons that determines how you get out of them. If you focus on using the slowdown as this time for improvements, for optimization, and for adjusting what may not be working, you will only set yourself up for better when things pick back up again. And I promise you, things will pick back up again. So let's dive on in and cover what it is that you should be doing during the slowdown so that you're ready for when things pick back up and you're back to putting the busy into business. My go-to platform for sending and signing contracts, tracking payments, and managing the paperwork side of my business is HoneyBook. Get started with this seamless project management system right now. Start your HoneyBook free trial, plus get 50% off your annual subscription at jennacutcher.com slash HoneyBook. Start and grow your email list in 2021 with Flowdesk. Start a free 30-day trial, no credit card necessary, plus lock in at 50% off your monthly subscription when you fall in love at jennacutcher.com slash Flowdesk. That's jennacutcher.com slash F-L-O-D-E-S-K. 
When I was a wedding photographer, I actually loved the ebb and flow of my calendar year. I reserved six months out of the year for heavy shooting and editing, and then the other six months were all about systems, structures, and updates to make sure that when the busyness hit again, I was ready to hit the ground running in a way that supported my much bigger goals. I welcomed those slow seasons after all the craziness because it helped for me to ensure that my business foundation was strong and was built to last. It was also in those slow seasons that I birthed things like this podcast and my online courses and all the affiliate marketing that I do. So I have to remind myself sometimes that just in life and the clothes that your mom wore 20 years ago, everything in business is cyclical. When things are really amazing, there might be something that will take it down a notch. And that isn't me being a Debbie Downer. That's me giving you permission to not always be striving for more and be disappointed when things take a quick left. When things shift a bit and your business feels like it's on this path towards shambles, there are ways to take control and focus on improving, tweaking, and pivoting so that you can get back on track. Which, by the way, you will because you are strong and you are capable and you're beautiful and your butt looks nice and you're talented. Am I right? So it's going to take a little grit. It's going to take some planning, maybe a few late nights and heck, lots of creativity. But I believe that our slower periods of business are what show us most clearly what we need to be doing, where we need to shift, pivot or evolve. And they reveal where we need to be showing up best to reach the most people, make the biggest impact and ultimately regain control of our sales. So I have four methods for you to keep in your back pocket today and to use whenever you experience slow seasons of business so that you can work towards boosting those sales and getting back in the game. And know that if you're walking through one of these seasons right now, I see you and I acknowledge the difficulty of even making some of the simplest decisions. It all feels really hard and heavy and pivotal during those times. And I hope, if nothing else, these four methods give you a little more confidence and serve as a reminder that you are still in control. What you do does matter. And there's always something you can do to keep moving forward, even if it's just tiny little steps each day. Forward is forward. So let's get into it. Number one, first things first, if you're in a slower season of business, take that time to update your portfolio so that it is your latest and your greatest work and it's truly reflective on where you're at in business. When things are slow, a lot of time we keep ourselves busy while doing things that aren't really moving the needle. We try to implement all of these crazy strategies when in reality, we could spend a day or two really fine tuning some of the more neglected pieces of our business. I know updating your portfolio might not seem like the most imperative action to take and you're busy convincing yourself you just did it a few months ago when in reality it was probably like two years ago, but it's likely time for an update and a refresh. It's easy to convince yourself that only your social media matters or that's where people look for your current happenings. And it's a common lie that we tell ourselves that updating our portfolio or our home on the web definitely won't feel like something that's going to directly affect your sales. But I promise taking the time to thoughtfully update your portfolio is one of the best ways to attract and hone in on your perfect clients and customers. It's one of those things that just falls by the wayside when you're in the fast and furious rush of a busy season. If you're wondering what I mean by updating your portfolio, or if you're not in a business that has a technical portfolio, like those old fashioned folders with your best work all laminated and shiny that you hand over to a prospective client in a meeting, it's important that you look at how you're showing up digitally as a reflection of your own portfolio. This means that you can still evaluate all of your marketing materials to make sure they're aligned and up to date with what you do and who you serve. For example, Does your website match how pretty and thoughtful your Instagram feed is? So often I'll meet entrepreneurs and I'll ask them for their websites to which they usually respond with things like, oh, just go to my Instagram. That's where I share my best work. Or make sure you go to my site on your computer. The mobile version is a mess. Can you relate? A lot of times we share our work on social media and posts that live and die within 24 hours if we're lucky, but very rarely do we spend time updating our website. 
So take some time to add to your site with your latest work projects, freebies, and photos. You want your website to be just as pretty or even prettier than social media because that's where people will actually land to book or buy from you. And it should be a place that you're proud for people to end up on. Your website is your home on the internet, the place where you can decorate and own. You have control over it and it should be the landing place for your prospects. Take time to make sure that your website is a place that serves people, speaks to the pain points or challenges they're facing that your business can solve, gives them a taste of the experience of what working with you would be like, and provides clear and direct calls to action to capture that audience and invite them to engage so that you can serve them even better. Updating your website might also look like updating your rate card, refreshing the data and stats you share about your services, refreshing photos and headlines, and finally adding that new section dedicated to your newest offerings. And while we're here, I need to hold myself accountable. I realized last month that we hadn't updated the Gold Digger podcast page details for a long while. Like the numbers we proudly shared on golddiggerpodcast.com were trailing behind our actual downloads by about 30 million downloads. Like that's a really big deal, especially when sponsorship opportunities and big name guests tend to use numbers as a gauge for the show's success and whether they want to be a part of it or not. Do you have sections like that on your website? Do a quick audit after you finish this episode and update anything that's potentially old or out of date. This is a super simple way to spiff up your corner of the web so it's ready and accurate for when even more clients come pouring through when business takes off again. You know I'm a longtime fan of that whole done is better than perfect philosophy, but when business is slow and you have the spare minutes to review what you've previously created just to get it done and crossed off your list during a crazy busy season, go back and comb through your work, double check things to see if you can improve or finalize anything that was simply just getting the job done but could be better optimized. I promise you, if you spend even just one day updating your photos and your copy and making sure you're showing your best best projects, products, and work focused on enhancing that experience for your dream clients, you'll position yourself in a way that will help you grow. Also, while we're here, now's a really good time to ensure that you have a solid way on your website to capture someone's email address to keep the conversation going off of social media and your website. Don't just assume that people are going to bookmark your page to come back to you. Don't focus solely on putting a ton of effort into making your social media the best of the best. Remember, you don't own your followers or control these platforms. So instead, start thinking of your website as your cozy and complete home on the internet that communicates what you do, how you serve others, and how they can keep in touch with you, allowing you to take them on a journey through their inbox and ultimately after you've served, 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 and serve them some more, buy from you. A slower season is the ideal time to start that email list you've been putting off, or if you've already got your list going, to update your welcome email or sequence and pop back into the inboxes of your subscribers. Email list building is my gluten-free bread with extra butter, so I have dozens of resources for starting, growing, and serving your list. They're all in one place for you at jkemaillist.com. You'll find a subject line, cheat sheet, email templates, more podcast episodes on the top of email list building and access to my free zero to 250 email list building challenge, which is basically this epic mini course in starting and growing your list, complete with tutorials, walking you through every single step. Again, you can head to jkemaillist.com for all of these resources and more. Number two, next I want for you to really take this time to dig into your data and your numbers. I love numbers like a lot. Perhaps it's because so much of entrepreneurship is surprisingly rooted in emotions. Like there's no employee handbook. You're your own HR, your manager, you're the sales department. It's riddled with things that you have to feel in order to figure out. Obsessions and distractions that drive you off course and wise deeper than the ocean. But for me, two plus two It's the same answer every time. And they say the numbers don't lie. So when it seems like everything else is deceiving you, you go where you can touch something solid and dependable. Now, I know not everyone is a data lover, but I'd invite you to get really curious about what is and isn't working in your business from the numbers standpoint. 
A lot of times when we dig into the numbers, we find out that one to two things move the needle forward the most. And yet we try to make it our job to master and do a hundred new things without understanding where our efforts result in true results. Whenever I dig into numbers, I generally have a revelation that we don't need to do more. We simply need to optimize and strategize what's already working, which is like a big, fresh gulp of air in the form of relief. Look at what has caused spikes in your email list or dips in your website views. See if there's specific content topics that consistently outperform others. Look at where most people are ending up on your website form. You might think it's from Instagram when in reality, it's Pinterest driving most of your traffic. These are powerful stories brought to us through numbers to help us understand what is actually moving the needle for us so that you can double down on those efforts that have worked really well in the past and ease up on the things that just aren't landing. If you're thinking to yourself, oh gosh, she's about to call me out because I don't have numbers to dig into. I'm not creating content. What the heck do I do? First things first, don't be hard on yourself here. And instead, look at this slower period as the opportunity you've needed to put content into place that will help for you to attract new clients in the future. Even if you're not writing in-depth blogs or releasing 60-minute podcast episodes, you've likely created content in some form that will give you some insight or information into what your audience, your potential clients enjoy. Scroll back through your most recent Instagram posts and pick out the top three posts with the most likes, comments, saves, and other engagement. If you have a creator or business account, you can tap insights for an even more in-depth view. And if not, just pull the numbers and use them to guide your creation process. Find that when I share about family life and body positivity, my engagement goes up. People are innately curious about the scenes behind the business. I know that I'm the same way as a consumer. And when I look at the numbers, it's clear. But instead of just pumping out more pictures of my adorable little daughter, I make a note of what I was saying in the caption and consider how that could translate into a longer, more in-depth piece of content. Where can I take that even further? What is the message that resonated with people? And how can I tell that story even better through my follow-up content? What would that look like for you? Well, let's just say your business is graphic design and a Facebook post where you shared a recent digital illustration got tons and tons of comments. You could write a blog post featuring seven ways to use a digital illustration in your business or four occasions where a digital illustration makes a great gift. See how that spirals off from a simple social media post? I'll bet that you have posts that performed well because they were entertaining or educational or empowering, and you could absolutely expand on those smaller posts and make them into a larger piece of content that will serve and attract your audience into taking actual action with your brand. And if you're feeling stuck, when's the last time you did some research? Like when have you set aside time to really dig into what the data is telling you? Take some time today, if you don't have a business yet, to research what's already out there that's aligned with the offer that you want to sell. Hop onto Pinterest or Google and type in a few keywords that resonate with your product or offer because those will show you more of what's already out there and help for you to imagine your own product showing up there. Explore, click the links, investigate. What other items are showing up? What are the generated keywords that follow your idea in the guided search function? Are there reviews that would give insight on what's missing? Are new ideas coming to mind? If you have an established business, let's pretend you're going to go on Shark Tank because honestly, this is one of my favorite things to pretend. Do you confidently know your numbers? Would you be able to tell the sharks what your best selling product is? What's moving the needle for you most? What marketing strategies are yielding the best result? What your profit margins are? What you'd use more funds to do? Information truly is power. And the more that you know about the ins and outs of your own business, the more that you can tweak and adjust where you're spending your time and your energy and use your resources in the wisest ways possible. Flowdesk was created by two female founders to solve the email challenges that the other platforms just couldn't solve. Flowdesk is a favorite among my students with over 4,500 gold diggers on the platform today. To start, grow, or refresh your email list strategy with gorgeous, customizable templates, sleek and easy to install forms, simple to set up audience segments and automated workflows, try Flowdesk. Use my link to lock in at half off your subscription. That's $19 a month for life at jennacutcher.com slash Flowdesk. 
Flowdesk is an easy to use, intuitive, and beautiful solution to email marketing. You don't need to learn how to be a copywriter, graphic designer, and website developer to start and grow your email list. Flowdesk includes beautifully designed templates, many with pre-written copy you can use and adapt for your own brand's voice. You can create forms and pop-ups for opt-ins, even if you don't have a website yet. Plus, behind-the-scenes insights to track your progress and email success. You'll have unlimited everything. There's no subscription tier. It's all yours from day one, so you can learn, grow, implement, and market to your list for $19 a month. No limits, no lock templates, all of the features you need to grow and serve your email list. Your monthly subscription is $19 a month if you sign up at jennacutcher.com slash flowdesk. That's jennacutcher.com slash F-L-O-D-E-S-K. The other day I was cleaning out my closet and I found my old file folders filled with things like contracts and timelines and invoices. Are you still sending contracts by snail mail or even through email attachments? Does your stack of paperwork keep you up at night? Do you need a system for growing your business? For creating and sending those contracts and getting signatures and sending invoices and managing project timelines and more? My go-to system is HoneyBook. Head to jennacutcher.com slash HoneyBook for a free trial plus 50% off your annual subscription. HoneyBook is the tool you need to create a real system for your invoices, contracts, messages, questionnaires, timelines, and more. And it's all in one place. And the cool thing is, is that it integrates with things like QuickBooks, Calendly, Google Calendar, Gmail, Zapier, and other apps and tools that you might already be using in your business. Listen, full honesty here. I had all of those stacks of papers and file folders for years. They were scattered all over the place. And I was just kind of saying a prayer that I didn't forget a fine detail. But now I have end-to-end project tracking and all of that important paperwork in one place. Head to jennacutcher.com slash honeybook for a free trial plus 50% off your annual subscription when you sign up. The third method I have for you when sales are slow is to find a way to create scarcity and hit the trenches. Have you ever heard of the scarcity principle? An article from Investopedia defines it like this. The scarcity principle is an economic theory in which a limited supply of a good coupled with a high demand for that good results in a mismatch between the desired supply and the demand equilibrium. It goes on to say that marketers commonly use the principle to create scarcity around a product or a good, making it exclusive in order to generate a demand for it. So how does this economic principle translate to you? When things are slow, scarcity can create the buzz you need to make people take action and to increase your bottom line. The problem is that a lot of times we put offers out into the world and we don't set a timeline or a deadline or any sort of limit around the offer. People grow to believe that they can make a decision later and thus they never decide. It's our fatal flaw when we put something out there and tell ourselves people will find it when they're ready. One of the greatest gifts you can give someone is a timeline to make a decision, regardless of what they decide, intentionally choosing versus having time make the decision for you is an accomplishment for a consumer. While evergreen funnels or timeless offers are great when the demand meets a supply, scarcity offers work a little differently. It creates a psychological desire for people to buy in because they don't want to miss out or be left behind on a short-term offer. So how does this work? Try creating a limited time offer, something that will either go away in a week or two or an opportunity where the price will increase exponentially after that amount of time or a specific number of an offer that once it's gone, it's gone. Do a concentrated push, meaning you're all about this offer. You're unapologetically showing up to communicate it and sharing the scarcity within the offer itself. Get loud about it, like invite in questions from your followers and email subscribers and actually take the time to respond with voice text or video DMs. In my recent launches, this personal touch of audibly or visibly reaching out to the people in my DMs has been one of the biggest linchpins in my launches. People want to hear from you and see that you care that you're actually invested in their journey. Be willing to put yourself out there and get in the trenches like you might have in the early days. Share your offer and the value of it and promote yourself. The key here isn't to create something that people only buy because they feel like if they don't, they're never going to find success. That type of marketing leaves a bad taste in people's mouths and rightfully so. There's nothing good about being bullied into a purchase. 
No, this type of scarcity more so pushes you to really get yourself out there and to communicate so well that the people whom the offer is created for will know that with certainty. In creating this deadline for decision-making, you're equally inviting in those to say, hey, it's not the right time or fit or offer or price point, just as you're inviting those ready to take the next step with you. So many times our marketing is the bare minimum or it's on autopilot and we trick ourselves into thinking that people already know our offer exists, that they'll buy it or take advantage of it when or if they're ready. But people sometimes need a reason to make a decision and a scarcity offer creates that sort of urgency. No decision is made in a vacuum and people want to feel cared for and thought about. So help people to either say yes or no. Be willing to get out there and have more one-on-one interactions and invite those in to collect feedback, insight, and to help qualify clients. Number four, and finally, when sales are slower, work on enhancing the client experience. Whenever things are going south, I always challenge people to look at every single touch point you have with a prospect. Like from the moment someone hears your name and says, oh, I've never heard of that, to the second they click purchase, it's important to think about all the steps someone would have to take in that process and optimize and simplify that entire thing for them. Literally begin there. Start with what I like to call the mom test. And I love this because moms or motherly figures in their life are always honest and they'll tell you what you need to know in a way that builds up your confidence without ruining it. And a lot of times when we create, we create for our peer group unknowingly instead of creating for our dream clients. And so when you ask someone outside of your world to help you, their insight is going to help you understand the mind of your consumers. So essentially, I want for you to ask your mom or someone you trust to go to your website to click through the pages as though they're interested as a client or a customer. And you want them to go all the way through the process to book you or to buy a specific product from you. Watch along as they navigate and click where they think they should. Count how many clicks it takes or where they might take a wrong turn. Do not say anything. Do not direct as they're navigating your site. Just silently watch them take action and take note on how many clicks or pages it takes for them to find where they hit purchase. The goal of this is to see how clear it is for someone else to figure out how to work with you or how to buy from you. You ultimately want to eliminate any unnecessary clicks where you could confuse or lose someone, and you want to make sure it's super easy and straightforward for them to follow through quickly and easily to become a client and removing any and all obstacles or assumptions along the way. Investigate every touch point that you have with a client, how you can make their experience better or more special from email communications and invoicing to shipping notifications and refund policies. If you're a service-based business, could you record a video for each new client who inquires, telling them about you, your experience, and what working with you would be like in the context of their specific request or need? For product-based businesses, could you show different uses for your product or help people understand which product would be the right fit for their needs or how they can incorporate it into their life even easier? And for my fellow digital entrepreneurs, could you help connect people to your offer in an easier way and help them qualify themselves with confidence and less clicks? We're often so close to and familiar with our own offers that to us, it just seems so common sense, easy to navigate and find solutions. Having some outside perspective will help you tighten up your communications, ease your line to purchase, and make the entire client experience more thoughtful and simplified, which makes all the difference in the world for someone who's on the fence for buying your product or service. All right, that is a lot of ifs, maybes, and ideas. So let's put some action items into a list for you as you start thinking about how to leverage the time you have in a slow season and turn it into future opportunities. First, review the many different visuals of your business, your portfolio, website, graphics, one sheets, freebies, media kits, emails, and so on, and choose to update one or components of one each day. Next, Dig into whatever numbers you have and reflect on what resonated with your audience. Make a list of four to five pieces of content you can create that builds off of what already did well for your business in the past. Then have some fun with a new offer or an existing offer that you could release for a limited amount of time. Choose a release date, set a timeline, and test out a mini launch format that not only gives you earning potential in a slow season, it'll be a learning experience to see how your audience responds. 
Finally, audit the client experience from how you show up in their email inboxes down to the steps they need to actually take to click buy now on your incredible offers. Let's be honest, business dry spells suck. There's no mincing words here because I've been there and I get it. But as an eternal optimist, a part of me does secretly find these slower times to be telling and even beneficial in some ways. They allow us to dig into the nitty gritty and create new processes and strategies that are tighter and even more aligned with our goals and our purpose. While they might tempt you to freeze or go into desperation mode, resist that temptation and hang on to the truth that what you do matters, how you show up matters, and the small actions and forward steps that you take today can impact you and your business for years to come. So just keep moving, just keep refining, and you're sure to hit your stride again so soon. I truly, truly believe that. Until next time, gold diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. And thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Gold Digger Podcast. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger Podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 